Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Sandra. I'm a mom and I have a son who has a substance use disorder. Today I'm going to share uh, an update on where he is at in his journey and I'm going to share something that I've learned uh, over my years of this addiction journey. Um, first of all, Ben is doing really well. I am really impressed with where he's at. He is at a treatment center right now. Yay. So that's great news. Uh, there's nothing I could do. I'm hoping that he sticks it out and I know he's working really, really hard and I'm really proud of him. And the important thing is I hope he's proud of himself. Uh, he's still struggling. He's got a lot that he needs to work through, uh, but he's doing it and we're taking it one day at a time one minute at a time and sometimes it's one second at a time. So that's where Ben is at. Um, one of the things I've learned over the years is that nothing changes if nothing changes. And I used to say that to Ben and he hated it. He goes, I hate hearing that nothing changes if nothing changes. Well, I could happily say that today he totally understand what that means for him. I'm going to share what that means for me. There was a time where, and it wasn't that long ago, uh, where life was really chaotic. Uh, and I learned that I couldn't change Ben. I couldn't change him. The only thing that I could change was myself. At the time, I was living in total insanity. And that's the definition of insanity. Nothing changes if nothing changes. You keep doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. Well, let me tell you, for the longest time, I was trying to fix him. I was, uh, you know, trying to change him, uh, tr trying to make him do what I thought was best for him because I was his mom. When that didn't work, I thought, okay, well, I can't change him, so what can I do? Change me, working on myself. And, you know, what I've learned in life is that it's all about me. And it's all about me in that, when other people are doing things, there's nothing I could do about that. What can I do? I could control my actions. I can control my reactions. I have choices, just like my son had choices. <clears throat> I said I spent so much energy back in the day, hyper focused on my son, and that took away from the rest of my life. It affected everything, uh, family life, work life. When I started to change myself, I, re I realized uh, life could be different. Okay, so what did I do? I started to work on myself. I learned what addiction was. I learned, I learned, like in Narnon, we say the three, th the three C's. We can't control it. We can't change it. We can't cure it. We didn't cause it. I know there's three C's in there. Um, so I started to gather my tools. I learned to use them. I set my boundaries. The boundaries weren't for him, they were for me so that I could live a better life. I stopped enabling. Um, I let consequences happen uh, because there was a time when things would happen and I would try to fix it so that he didn't have to deal with the consequences. You know, one of the big things is that I learned that was really hard as a mom is that I couldn't take him in when he was homeless. As a mom, you know, before addiction, I was there to shelter my kids, make sure they had clothes and food. And when addiction came in, that changed everything. I had to relearn how to be a mom. Um, I know that there's many people out there that may have a loved one that has a substance use disorder and may be living with them. And I know that it's challenging because I have been there. Um, I know for me, I learned that if I took him in when he was unhoused, he would have food, he would have shelter, and he would have no reason to change because he'd be comfortable. Whatever money he did have, he could use on drugs. That's what I learned. And so when I realized that I couldn't change him and I started to change me and started working on myself, everything changed. 
It doesn't mean that all of a sudden he wanted recovery and everything was good. No, what, what happened in my situation, and I can only share my experience, is that Ben recognized that I was changing and that he couldn't manipulate me anymore. Uh, because there was a time where he, if I saw a little glimmer that, you know, he said he might want to change, oh my gosh, well, I was there ready to do whatever I needed to do. But I also learned that I was putting more energy into his life than he was. So as I learned, I changed my actions. So, and I, and Ben recognized it because he says, I know I have to put more work into my life first. And it's like, yes. He learned what my boundaries were. He didn't like it. But over time, I got to tell you, my life became easier because I was no longer trying to fix someone that I couldn't fix. If he didn't want to be fixed, I couldn't do anything. Because what I've also learned is recovery is really hard. Ben is in recovery right now. He is at a treatment center and it's a lot of work. And, you know, some people might think, why don't you just force them? The thing here in Canada, there are waiting lists for treatment centers unless you have tens of thousands of dollars. And so Ben had been on this list for many months, many months. And the date finally came. And what I was grateful for is that he was alive because during that wait time, there were numerous overdoses or drug poisoning and uh, I'm just grateful that there is breath and that he got to the treatment center. I didn't force him. He really wanted it. He worked hard to get there and he's there now and he's working hard to stay in recovery. So, you know, basically the moral of the story in my world is that I learned I couldn't force Ben to make change. I couldn't force him to go to treatment. I had no control. So when I started to take the focus and put it on myself and learn about addiction and learn how to set boundaries and learn how not to enable and how to love him, how to still love him, but not enable. Um, that's a lot of information. Uh, you know, it, it's hard work. My recovery has been hard work, but I'm here to tell you that it is worth it because I worked on myself. I know that I've done everything I could to support Ben and I continue supporting him a hundred percent. I'm there for him a hundred percent when he's in recovery. Uh, and I am able to have joy in my life and do things for myself. And it is not selfish. Self-love, self-care is wonderful and you are worth it. And I know there are thousands of people in the same shoes as myself that have a loved one that has a substance use disorder. I am here to tell you that you are not alone. There is support out there and you can find your joy. It's taking it one day at a time and working on your recovery. As usual, I am going to link up support groups below, whether you are the person with the substance use disorder or a loved one, there is support out there. You can find your joy and uh, we all have choices. We all have choices and I chose to work on myself and uh, I'm choosing to have joy in my life. I wish you all a great week. Uh, take care of yourselves. Please reach out and remember where there is breath, there is hope. Take care, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Bye for now.